A'udhu Billah Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We have been talking about the life of Fatima to Zahra, salamu alayha. And in this session, um, we will continue from uh, the previous sessions. In our second session, we were talking about and the events of the sad demise of the Holy Prophet, um, how things unfolded and the people um, uh, had an ambush on the house of Fatima to Zahra, salamu alayha. Um, why did Saqifa take place? Why did the things happen in Saqifa where people left Imam Ali alayhi salam? Um, and in this session, I would like to touch upon those questions that arise uh, in the minds of people uh, about uh, the events that took place and why did the people leave Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam? Um, when Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu was asked um, in 64-65 Hijra, uh, probably a bit later, probably during that time, uh, when was Hussein killed? Mata Qatil al Hussein. When was Imam Hussein al killed? He said, Qatil al Hussein no bis Saqifa. Hussein was killed on the day of Saqifa. Um, when Abdullah ibn Abbas was asked, this question and he gave such an answer. The people started doubting his memory and he, they started questioning if he is mentally stable or not. And they said, you know, Saqifa happened in 11 Hijra and Hussein alayhi salam was killed in 61 Hijra. There is a 50 year gap between the two events. What is he talking about when he says that Hussein was killed on the day of Saqifa? He said, I'm not out of my mind. I know what I'm talking about. What I meant was that uh, the day Imam Hussein alayhi salam, uh, you know, the day people went to Saqifa and they chose um, someone for uh, caliphate, they chose someone for khilafat, other than Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, that was the day they laid the foundations of Karbala. So the things happened the way they happened because people had left Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. And because they had become envious with the position of Ahlul Bayt that's why things happened the way they happened. Because they had left Ghadir. Ghadir is the place on 18th of Zil Hijjah when the Holy Prophet announced the uh, Imamat of Imam Ali. Uh, someone had asked one of the great scholars in Najaf, why do you commemorate Muharram so much? Why do you uh, commemorate the martyrdom of Imam Hussain alayhi salam so much. Why is it Muharram and Safar two months continuously? You have majalis, you have events, you have uh, mourning for so long. Why? Why not only just one day of Shahadat of Imam Hussain? Why not only just 10 days? Why do you have two months of mourning for Imam Hussain? And he answered, Sayyid Muhsin al Amin al Amili. Sahib, uh, Sahib uh, Ayyan Shia, you know, he compiled the encyclopedia called Ayyan Shia. He said, because we do not wish for you to forget Muharram or martyrdom of Imam Sallallahu Islam like you forgot Ghadir. We did not celebrate Ghadir enough, you forgot it. You don't know what happened in Ghadir. But because we commemorate Muharram so much so, no one has uh, the audacity, no one has the, the courage to to deny what happened in Muharram, to deny what happened in Karbala, to deny the martyrdom of Imam Sallallahu and who were the uh, people who carried out the atrocities or the oppressors or the tyrants. You do not have any courage to defend Yazid or uh, Obedul ibn Ziyad or um, Umar al-Sa'ad or any one of the people who were uh, present in Karbala against Imam Hussain. So that's why it is important to remember Ghadir. Now, very quickly, I want to touch upon Ghadir. The Holy Prophet not only just make the people uh, uh, admit that Man kuntu maula fahada aliyun maula, whoever I am the master of this Ali is his master. He also made, he made them all pay allegiance to Imam Ali alayhi salam. After Ghadir, for three days, people were paying allegiance to Imam Ali alayhi salam. First, it was the women, then the men. They all paid allegiance to Imam Ali. And even though they paid allegiance, and this was the greatest consensus, it was the greatest ijma 
on any one person after the Holy Prophet Even then they forgot. Even then they left Imam Ali And when the announcement was Ghadir was going to happen, some of the scholars, the way they have written Ghadir, they say that it was the first time ever that on the pulpit, on the member, the Holy Prophet had someone sitting next to him or someone standing next to him. And that was Imam Ali And people saw a difference in normal uh, practice of the Holy Prophet that at all times he only has one person sitting on the member himself and now he has two. He has Ali ibn Abi Talib sitting next to him. Why? That was a question uh, that, that uh, arose in the, in the minds you know, in, of the people. And the Holy Prophet وسلم, had intentionally done that. And people were listening less to the words of the Holy Prophet and watching the face of Imam Ali Islam more in Ghadir. And this happened and after the Holy Prophet announced, he said something that uh, I will have 12 successes. It's an Ashara. Um, 12 men will rule after me. Ali wa Mahdi. The first one of them will be Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, and the last one of them will be Imam al-Mahdi So these were the words of the Holy Prophet. Um, and for the next three days people paid allegiance and the Holy Prophet provided the food and drink for all of them. This was obviously a miraculous event uh, because it was one uh, she camel that they, sl- they, they slaughtered or they um, made, uh, you know, cook for the, the whole of a crowd that was over 100,000 people. And it was the miraculousness of the Holy Prophet that he fed them all with one she camel. He said, I've touched it. And, you know, his uncle Abu Talib had fed the whole of uh, Quraysh with only one lamb. So now people started gathering. They, they paid allegiance to Imam Ali Islam and they left. When they left, um, Ghadir is, I always say, the Ghadir is a junction. It is not just a junction of different paths, people going from Mecca to Medina to Yemen to Syria to Iraq and to all over this, you know, Middle Eastern countries. It was not only just a junction for the people to take different paths, but it's also a junction of belief. When the people had gathered in Ghadir, the Holy Prophet said, whoever has left Ghadir, Tell them to come back to Ghadir. And whoever is behind, wait for them to come and join us in Ghadir. So people who have gone to their path, they should come back. And the people who are behind, they should come and join us in Ghadir. Now what does that mean? That also means that people who have left Imam Ali salam and gone forward and started calling him, um, and, you know, God, they should come back and not say Ali Allah or Ali Rabb. They should say Ali Mawla. And the ones who are behind and say Ali is like us, he's like an ordinary person, they should not say Ali Banda or Ali Abd. They should also come and join and say Ali Mawla. So everyone should join at Ghadir and believe in the vilayat and imamat of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Fatima to Zahra had also pointed out in her sermon, in her, we will talk about in detail about her sermon, but she also points out that how quickly have you forgotten the message of the Holy Prophet? How quickly have you forgotten Ghadir? It is Ghadir that when people left, they completely left the Ahlul Bayt and they left the true message of Islam, the, the spirit of Islam. Ghadir is a completion of faith. Today I'm completing your faith for you. Your religion is complete. Why? Because it is the proof of Khatm Nabuwat the completion of messengership and ibtidai imamat. It is a proof that imamat has started. So the proof that la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Muhammad is the last messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is aliyun waliullah. Ali is the wali of Allah, vice grant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is the, um, uh, the master from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or is the one who has the vilayat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said aliyun wali. And this is basically from Ghadir. The other point of Ghadir is that the Holy Prophet says, Ya, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, Al Yawm Akmaltu Lakum Dinakum is in Surah Ma'idah, verse number 3. But there is another verse in the same Surah, which is uh, verse number 67. It says, Ya, you are Rasul, Balligma unzilla ilaykamir rabbik, Fa in lam tafal, Fama, Balagta, Risalata, 
Wallahu ya asamaka min al-nas. He says, O my messenger, O my beloved messenger, deliver what has been revealed to you from thy Lord. If you do not deliver this one message, then you've not done anything. You've not conveyed your messengership. What does it mean that you've not conveyed? Not that everything will, you, you know, you've not conveyed anything. No, what it means is that everything will go to waste if you do not hand over the religion in the strong hands of Ali ibn Abi Talib, the one who can truly protect all of your efforts, the one who can protect all of your hard work and uh, save the religion and protect the religion and protect the Holy Quran and, uh, uh, and convey the true message, the true Muhammadi, Islam Muhammadi, you know, the true uh, Islam that the Holy Prophet وسلم, delivered. So uh, you have to rotate around Ghadir to understand. Uh, why it is important to believe in the Vilayat and Imamat of Ali ibn Abi Talib The things that happen after Ghadir are extremely important. People, when they left Ghadir, they actually left Ahlul Bayt. They say that the people who truly understood and accepted the Vilayat of Ali ibn Abi Talib were very few who, from the bottom of their heart, like Salman, Abu Dhar, Miqdad, uh, Ammar radiallahu anhum, you know, these were the people who, uh, who were politically correct in the, in the sense that they, 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 they remained on the vilayat and imamat of Ali ibn Abi Talib When people came back to Medina, they were all now questioning and uh, um, uh, doubting their faith in the Holy Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt Now, very quickly, I want to touch upon some of the things that we discussed in the last session. Why, why exactly is it that um, Imam Ali said, you know, many people try and ask questions. Why did the Holy Prophet uh, announce Ali ibn Abi Talib to be the successor? Why did he not announce one of the companions? So some people try and say that it is democracy to, to allow the people to choose and in religion, we believe that it is the Almighty who is the ultimate authority and Allah has to decide who the messengers are. He chooses who his messengers are and likewise, he chooses who the Imams are or who the successor of the Holy uh, Prophet uh, is or who the successors of the Holy Prophet will be. So he chose and the Holy Prophet delivered. Now, very quickly, I want to touch upon, number one, why did the Holy Prophet choose the, uh, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib Number one, because he was the most knowledgeable. I am the city of knowledge and Ali is, uh, Ali is its gate. Ali is the gate of the city of knowledge. Whoever wants knowledge, then they should come to the door. They should come to the gate of the city of knowledge. So Ali is the most knowledgeable. In the Holy Quran, it says, in Surah Ra'ad, Surah number 13, the last verse, verse number 43, it says, قُلْ كَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ وَمَنْ عِنْدَهُ إِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ O my messengers say to the people, the ones who do not believe in you, وَيَقُولُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُ لَسَّ مُرْسَلَى The ones who disbelieve say, you are not an apostle, you have not been sent by God. All say to them, كَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ وَمَنْ عِنْدَهُ إِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ Two witnesses are sufficient for me, uh, for my messengership. One is Allah Himself and the other is the one who has the knowledge of the complete book. The one who has knowledge of the complete book. Ilmul Kitab Al Kitab. Al is for a sagraq here. The one who has knowledge of the entire book. Like Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. All praises for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the one who has knowledge of the complete book. Ali ibn Abi Talib was asked, Ya Ali, which verse do you like? Uh, the most about yourself. There are uh, more than 500 verses that were revealed for Ali ibn Abi Talib. He, he was asked, which verse do you like the most about yourself? He said this verse. Uh, that uh, Allah says, you know, the Holy Prophet says, Allah says to the Holy Prophet, say to the people, two witnesses are sufficient between me and you, that you deny that I'm a messenger, I'm an apostle sent by Allah, and I say I am an apostle. Only two witnesses are sufficient. Allah is sufficient 
shahida as a witness wa man indahu ilm al kitab and the one who has the knowledge of the entire book two witnesses he says here allah chose me to be mentioned right after his name as a witness for the holy prophet so we say that it was imam ali alayhi salam because he was most knowledgeable secondly he was infallible in one of the previous sessions we proved that he is infallible uh, through ayat at-tathir and there are many many other verses that prove that ali ibn abi talib alayhi salam is infallible ayat at-tathir is one that we've already previously mentioned and one of the verses i'll mention surah number 2 surah baqara verse number 124 it says uh, that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made uh, ibrahim alayhi salam an imam wa adibta la ibrahim rabbuhu bi kalimatin fa atamahunna qala inni ja'aluka lin nasi imama qala wa min dhurriyati qala la yanalu ahd adh-dhalimin allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tried ibrahim alayhi salam and ibrahim fulfilled the trial uh, in the best way possible fa'atamahunna qala in ja'aluka lin nasi imama allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to ibrahim alayhi salam that i am making you an imam for the mankind qala wa min dhurriyati ibrahim alayhi salam said and will they be imamat will they be uh, such chosen imams in my progeny you know i want this imamat to remain in our progeny allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said qala la yanalu ahd adh-dhalimin my covenant will not reach the oppressors zalimin zulm zalim zulm is basically zalimin are the ones who do zulm zalim oppressor and zulm is oppression zulm is of three types upon allah when you don't believe in him in surah luqman luqman nabi luqman alayhi salam says ya bunayya la tushrik billah inna ash-shirka la zulman azim o my beloved son do not ever associate anyone with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed oppression is uh, indeed associating a, a partner to god to allah is like oppressing him inna shirka la zulmun inna shirka la zulmun azim it is great oppression on god second zulm is on people and third is on oneself when you commit sins it is like oppressing one's own soul rabbi inni zalamtu nafsi fa ghfir li fa innahu la yaghfiru dhunuba ghayra ka yamla wa allah i have oppressed myself so oppressing oneself is committing sins so three types of oppression on god on you know wrong beliefs creation of god and oneself based on this verse there are four categories of people one who have been committing sins or who have been oppressing um, before and they will continue to oppress they cannot have imamat second group is that previously they have not oppressed anyone but in the future they will be committing oppression they cannot they do not deserve imamat or to be imam third group the ones who previously uh, uh, oppressed they were they were committed oppression in the previous life but in the future they will not even though they may be forgiven because they have now repented but they do not deserve uh, imamat they do not deserve to be imam because a part of their life life has uh, oppression so they have committed oppression and the fourth group who have never had any sort of on god on people or on themselves any sort of oppression in previous life and no oppression in the future life the ones who have no oppression are the ones who are infallible and only they deserve imamat so god only chooses the ones who are infallible so we said ghadir the first proof for imam ali alayhi salam is his knowledge he is the most knowledgeable and secondly he is infallible there are many many other proofs we can go into uh, but it is important to understand that the family of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is extremely important um you know the holy prophet said there will be isna ashara in sahih bukhari it says isna ashara rajulan 12 men will rule after me in sahih muslim there are seven traditions one says 12 men the other one says 12 commanders and five traditions say 12 khalifas so 12 and the holy prophet said inni tarikun fikum thaqalain kitab allah wa itrati ahl bayt in sahih muslim it says the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i'm leaving behind two weighty things two uh, uh, important things those two important things are the book of allah and my progeny my household ma antamassaktum bihima lan tadillu ba'di abada if you stay 
uh, in touch with them, then you will never go astray after me. They will not leave each other until they see me on uh, the pool of Kawthar. So Quran and Ahlul Bayt, the book of Allah and Ahlul Bayt will always remain together. So the ones who say Hasbuna Kitabullah, the book of Allah is sufficient, are wrong. Because Quran and Ahlul Bayt will always remain together. And the Holy Prophet left behind Quran and Ahlul Bayt, the book of Allah and the Ahlul Bayt, his holy progeny. And he also said that there will be 12 successes after me. How is it possible that he says that I'm leaving behind two things, Quran and Ahlul Bayt, my household, and there will be 12 successes, that these 12 successes, any one of them will be outside the family of the Holy Prophet because he says I'm leaving behind Quran and Ahlul Bayt, Quran and the, uh, the Holy Family, my family. So this family of his, these 12 successes will be from the family. And hence we believe that it, the first one of them is Ali salam, and then Imam Hassan salam, then Hussein, his two grandsons. And then the remaining nine will be from the progeny of Imam Hussein salam, and the last one will be Imam Mahdi who is still alive and is in occultation and he will reappear. So this is the whole concept that people had left in Ghadir that, uh, uh, that brought them to oppose uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib and oppose Fatima to Zahra because Fatima alayha, is the first mujahida, the first lady in the path of Vilayat and Imamat to defend Ali ibn Abi Talib. She was the greatest defender, the greatest lady to defend the Vilayat of Ali ibn Abi Talib. What she faced uh, of the oppression was because of the defense she was providing Ali ibn Abi Talib. When Ali ibn Abi Talib was, was stopped from speaking, he was banned from giving sermons, he was banned from uh, addressing his right, it's only then she spoke. So many people may question why did she speak? She only spoke because Imam Ali was not allowed to speak. And her daughter Zainab also followed her footsteps that when in the court of Ubaidul ibn Ziyad or in the court of Yazid, Imam Sajjad the fourth Imam was not allowed to speak. It was Zainab who spoke following the footsteps of her mother. So Fatima Salam spoke and went to the court and, and delivered the sermon in, um, uh, in front of the first Khalifa and the rest of the Muslims because it was Imam Ali who was not allowed to speak. And she faced all of the problems um, of the attack on her house and the rest of the atrocities because uh, she was defending her husband, who was also her imam, who was also her wali, who was also the successor uh, wasi of the Rasul, uh, of the Holy Prophet Inshallah, we'll continue in the next session.